Greetings ladies and gentlemen, Duckville here, welcome to a StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm replay cast that I've got for you today. It is going to be a TVT, something we have not seen for quite a while. This is a match that I picked up off uh, our cast it on Reddit, where you can go and uh, submit some replays for casting by all sorts of casters. There's sort of, uh, there's newer casters, there's a little bit more experienced casters. Of course, you know, this is it's not a place where Day Knight and Artosis crews for their their replays to watch. But uh, I mean, if it's it's a great place, especially for some other casters. If you want to jump on and uh, find some replays to practice your craft on, then uh, head over to reddit.com slash r slash cast it. There is a link in the R in the R Starcraft subreddit as well if you're uh, a little bit lost as to where to go. But anyway, let's talk about our players here today. Uh, up at the top right hand, uh, top top left hand side, I should say, of the new Star Station is our Red Terror player NVM. Perhaps he's a I don't know, maybe he's a Kurt Cobain fan. Post in the post in the uh, comments if you understand what that reference is for. Um, but he will be our Terran over here. And down in the bottom left hand side, a very long distance down here, but uh, we will find our blue Protoss player from team, I'm going to assume that's Eternity, it is Azamo Azamato, Azamato, kind of looks like, oh, it's almost Tomato, but not, anyway, uh, so yeah, we've got, a, we've got a TVT, I have not done a TVT for a very long time, it, uh, has been quite a while, I think just generally because a lot of people when they they sort of not not me personally, but I mean when when people play their TVT games and they they sort of you know there there aren't huge amount of sort of you know amazing epic sort of TVT games that are like you know down to the wire and that kind of crazy stuff. You do get some really good uh, mech versus bio games, especially at higher levels. You get uh, some sometimes mech versus mech can be quite exciting. Other times it can be extremely boring and most people would rather watch grass grow, but um, what I've got here should be a pretty interesting fight. It was recommended over on that subreddit as I mentioned. We'll see that Azamato is actually going to lose his scouting SCV. Did not get to scan out what was going on inside his opponent's face, but he did learn two things. What did he learn you ask? Well, he saw a marine come out first, so we can confirm okay. that his opponent Complete. either does not have gas or is going for a later gas and thus does not have a reaper coming out. Number two, there is no reaper, so you don't necessarily have to prepare for the threat of reapers at all. Number three is that he actually saw that his opponent had walled off, so there's no chance of... Like, I know it's, it's difficult to, to kind of predict it moving, like, another five, five or six minutes into the future, but he wouldn't necessarily be able to easily just climb up the ramp there and uh, jump inside his opponent's base because it is already walled off. But anyway, back at home for Azamato, we have got a starport. Standard kind of 1-1-1 coming out from him. We'll see just quite a bunch of marines just getting prepared at the top of the ramp. You'll notice that these guys, now as I said before, these guys uh, are going to be standing over here. Instead of preparing themselves for a possible uh, reaper jump just uh, I, you know, at some of these positions, and this is a really dangerous part of this particular map and it's a reason why I actually I actually hate this map for TVT just because people will quite often go Reapers and it can be very annoying to try and deal with that kind of thing but um, you'll see that they are at the front because the only real threat that he has to worry about for the moment is in theory Marines so we'll see how this is going to uh, proceed from here we can see that Nevermind is going to grab a tank and an engineering bay we've also got a command center forgetting about a starport for now we're not going to be worried about that kind of thing but his opponent is going for a cloaked banshee opening. This is one of the very, very common kind of stable builds in TVT. If you're not going to go for Reapers, a lot of players will then jump onto a cloaked banshee or two. A lot of the time, you do see people will also get just one cloaked banshee and then go into a raven afterwards. Can be, can differ sometimes. Sometimes they'll go cloaked banshee. Viking and then a Raven, or sometimes uh, you switch the Raven and the Viking around. But for the moment, Azamato is going to play a pretty safe sort of standard style. We'll get that Banshee across the map, we'll see what kind of unit he was going to get out of next, and then we'll be able to figure out where these guys are going to be. But for the moment, 
Nevermind is uh, very, play a very turtly kind of style here. Hasn't actually seen too much of what his opponent is up to, but has set up a bunker, a turret. We've got a tank even inside the main base here, and he's going to be very, very well fortified for the moment just to, uh, you know, prepare himself for any kinds of threats that may come across. So then we will have a little bit of a double pronged attack here from Azamato. He's got a Widow Mine coming out. There is, uh, as we said, the tank and a couple of Marines are there prepared, and a Banshee is going to come across. This is a Pretty interesting Upgrade. little tactic Complete. here from Azamato. He's going to bring in the Banshee and he's going to try and target down this first of the tanks. I'm a little bit surprised those Marines were actually out of range. But poking up, out comes the scan from Nevermind. And he will actually take out the Banshee. Very nicely done. So he is able to deflect that first attack. And as we were mentioning, the next unit that comes out for Azamato is just a Raven. So there's no real uh, follow-up Banshee threat for now. But it does put the fear of that into your opponent. So Nevermind will probably see him put a turret down very quickly here at the natural base. There you go. He does throw down the turret. He will have ex his expansion a lot earlier than his opponent though. As we can see, Azamato is actually going to have a much later base. He does have a sizable amount of units out. We may even see him push out to try and just threaten his opponent while he gets his expansion up. But for the moment, never mind. He's going to be a little bit behind in the units just for now. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's not huge. It's only around about six supplies we can see here on the uh, on the game heart overlay. But it it just means that he has to be a little bit more careful as he moves out here. But he will be able to catch up very easily with his much faster economy. Double SCVs coming out, double mules as well, and uh, eventually Azamato will be able to find his way there as well. So. Things are just sort of proceeding at a very, uh, very kind of calm pace for the moment. The Widowmine that was placed down the bottom of the cliff there was detected. Now, if you're wondering what that Widowmine was for, and you're sort of like, what was he doing with that? Well, the idea, I believe, from Azamato would have been to put the Banshee in a position around about here where it's very threatening and, and is trying to, you know, take down the tech lab. But if he backs up the, and a clump of Marines decides to move forward, then he'll get shot down by the, uh, by the Widowmine. So I... I Pretty sure that was the tactic that uh, Azamato was going for there. Pretty clever. I, I do like it. Um, but uh, as you can see, we are going to get a bio game out of both of these players. At least, a, like a minimum, very standard kind of bio play. I think we're going to go buy a tank now, just because of the, the consistent tanks that are popping out from both of them. Bio tank has been a pretty popular kind of composition through TBT, through, throughout the history of TBT. I can even remember casting... Uh, games on Steps of War way back in very, very early Wings of Liberty that were bio uh, sort of marine tanks. So it's uh, something that we have been very much useful uh, used to. I do really like the uh, the addition of bio tank. Oh, sorry, I keep calling a bio tank, like inferring that there are marauders there, but generally you you don't see marauders till a lot later. But anyway. Um, Marine tank is still pretty powerful these days, even even after some of the, the various changes that have gone through in this matchup. But uh, as we can see, your basic composition relies around having your marines there for the very uh, the very heavy kind of DPS. You have your tanks to siege up and splash down big clumps of marines, as we'll maybe see here from uh, from Nevermind if if these uh, marines get in range. But uh, and then what you can do, slowly leap for, leapfrog forward to try and attack into an opponent. You can use units like Medivacs or Vikings or, to spot the high ground and that kind of stuff. The Raven is also here, not only as detection against the Cloak Banshee, but also as a point defense drone, a little uh, helper tool here. In fact, he's going to drop down auto turrets. I'm a little bit surprised about that. But also, this baby is extremely powerful, drops down the Hunter Seeker, takes out a lot of health on that tank there. And we can see that we're already in a pretty uh, crazy little engagement scenario here where Azamato is able to siege up his opponent's ramp and production facilities as well and never mind needs to be extremely careful with how he approaches this. Most of the time Terran players they'll try and either slowly push forwards a tank to uh, get in position and be able to actually uh, counter siege up these units. Another way you can try and deal with it is to stop the air threat by getting out a couple of items and trying to take down these medevacs and the raven. But uh, as you can see here, it looks as if we are going to get just sort of the slow uh, pushing tank kind of counter to this from Nevermind. I mean, he's not counter attacking or anything like that. We can see the back at home, Azamato is getting a third command center up and running. We've got more racks now coming in as well. And uh, with a fourth tank even approaching, this is going to get a little bit more difficult here for our red and Terran player to be able to uh, sort of bring this one back. He's lost the, he's lost the racks, we've lost a tech lab and uh, possibly even a second racks here now as well. So this has been quite a 
frustrating little situation, and this is something that can occur on a very common basis on this map. Just the layout of this map, you know, with this sort of, this sort of, uh, crescent sort of shape here that allows tanks to get into position and fire up onto the high ground is just a, uh, really key part of how this map plays out. But, uh, as you can see, eventually Nevermind has now cleared out the medevacs and the raven that was there as well. In fact, one medevac will remain, but he doesn't want to lose that. So, we will see our red terran player finally move out of this position. What I would like to see hit from him is perhaps just a turret to prepare and then maybe a single tank to cover that region. But it looks as if we are going to uh, have a little bit of a, uh, an evacuation for now from... Azamato, who is going to head out of there. He knows his number's up. There are quite a lot of tanks. A lot of Marines are also here. And Nevermind will also, importantly, control the skies. Controlling the sky in these sorts of TVT tank Marine battles is in insanely important. I can't really stress how important it is. If you don't have vision for your tanks, um, then you can be in a lot of trouble. As, as uh, most folks will know, if you're not uh, too sure, tanks can actually shoot further than they can see when they're in siege mode. They, uh, they have, of course, this, um, this wonderful long range, uh, the 90mm cannons, and then it turns into the, uh, the, is it still the Arclight Cannon? I can't remember. That's what it was in Brutal. But anyway, has, uh, has a huge range there, and we'll see that you do need to control the skies. You need to have a f at least a couple of Vikings to be able to force your opponent's units out and be able to control the air. And this is one thing that does kind of bother me about the composition that Azamato has gone for here, is there there are no Vikings at all. He's relying on being able to snipe down any Vikings of his opponent uh, with these Marines and just try and force them out of the battle. But one thing that Azamato does have working wonderfully for him is his economy sitting up here at 63, sorry, 65 Marines at this point, and that means he's going to have some wonderful production. We can already see he's going up to plus two on his weapons very quickly here, and he's now just trying to move into position here to perhaps try and capitalize. He wants to, he wants to get in here and try and uh, get some shots off on these Marines, perhaps. Maybe sieging up here would have been a nice idea, but uh, the one thing you do not want to do is just sort of walk in a straight line in towards a big siege, uh, like a firing squad like that. You want to be able to prepare like some kind of line where you actually have all of your tanks firing at the same time so that they actually uh, just annihilate all of those marines on the ground. So we're in, a, we're in a little bit of a stalemate for the moment here while both players just sort of uh, jockey for position in this little uh, area outside the potential third and fourth base of Nevermind. But he does have a pretty decent tank count. He's up to seven. His opponent has six but does have more marines. Marines. There are 44 Marines out on the map and even Marauders are now being added into the mixture. A couple of extra factories now being added on for Azamato as well. His upgrades at the moment still continuing to pop out. We've got plus two on the weapons for the infantry units as we said, plus one on the vehicle upgrades. Well, vehicle and ship by the way because we are in the new patch. Vehicle and ship upgrades is um, still on the way, so we're still waiting for that kind of thing. Looks like Azamato is trying to head around the side, trying to cut off his opponent's access to that third base. A couple of tanks will see jump. In fact, uh, most of the tanks will see jump there, and this is the problem. Yeah, exactly. We can see here from Azamato's perspective that he actually had uh, his firing range was somewhere around about here but he doesn't actually have the vision to let that happen. So he is forced to back off for the moment, those Vikings being extremely helpful for Nevermind for the time being. As we said, the economy does show quite a lot of difference. 74 workers to the 59 of Nevermind. He's currently finally getting this third base up. He really needs this gas so that he can start really cranking out those uh, those tanks on a, a much uh, higher production scale. And we can see that his plus two to weapons, just finishing up now. As a motto, starting his three and does uh, have his plus two armor also just about finished up. So. Everybody is uh, just sort of playing this very sort of passive sort of uh, as we were sort of saying it's a little bit more like a chess game where you're just sort of moving things into position very slowly just sort of making sure that you have things every every I is dotted and every T is crossed before you move into a particular position that is a key part of playing in TVT it's why it's a, it, it's actually why it can be such 
uh, well, Medic can consider it such a boring matchup sometimes because it is such a very, very slow, methodical kind of situation. And of course, when you go into Mech Terran versus Terran, that's just, that's even worse. That takes it to a whole nother level. But we may get an engagement here as both squads getting prepared. The tanks will siege up, running in with some of the Marines. You can see them get absolutely annihilated there. So it looks as if Nevermind uh, did get a wonderful volley of fire out there. He also has a vision from these Vikings. So he's able to put, push himself into a little bit of a better position. They'll both sort of uh, head back around around the side for the moment. I think that, yeah, never mind. He's just going to back off to the corner right now. Sieging up, he does have the high ground advantage. I would love to see him perhaps drop a couple of these tanks off to the side to try and be prepared for a possible either reinforcement group of units coming up or perhaps for the evacuation of Azamato. But Azamato is just really taking his time right now. Has his fourth base up and running. We're going to get that extra gas coming in and we may see another big engagement here. A siege up from both, both teams. Will they be able to get the shots off that they need? It looks as if Azamato does have some really good shots from his tanks but he just does not have the firepower to be able to support all of those Marines the last two tanks are left on the field here for Asmato, and that is, uh, well, that is pretty much all that he has here. We can see now that Nevermind is slowly going to push forwards, perhaps even... No? Oh, I thought he was going to drop a tank on there, that would have been quite cool. But um, we can see that Azamato does lose out in that battle, just due to the position there. It was uh, a couple of Marauders that were on their way through, not sure what these guys were up to. But uh, Azamato falls down in that battle, loses quite a lot of his supplies, down to 70 supply at the moment, as to his opponents. Uh, 125 that we're talking an army count here guys and uh, that does mean that never mind is going to be able to push across of course the one big thing about TVT is that you cannot always just push back at an opponent who has lost some of their army if there are still tanks out and they're well positioned you can still fumble and uh, lose some of your own units yourself so you have to be very careful there but what I would love to see Nevermind do at this point, he knows he has won that battle, taking a fifth base as well at the same time. There's been very little when it comes to drops from either of these players, despite having a lot of medevacs on both sides. Neither of them have wanted to just split up a small group of marines and try and get some harassment damage done. But uh, I, I do kind of feel that Nevermind could possibly look to take a fifth base right now and put himself in a, in a little bit of a better economic position that he's at right now. Sitting at 61 SCVs, he does have that fourth base finally up waiting for some gas there and this is a point where uh, as, as a terror player you start to consider all right i've got four bases i've got a pretty decent economy bringing all sorts of things in and in fact just hold that door for a moment so marines and tanks are going to stem forwards and so never mind may actually take a really nice position here moving forwards with uh, six of those tanks they will take a good spot annihilating find a lot of those units on the ground marauders will stem through and it will be able to get a lot of damage done, but this does expose this, this fourth base just a little bit here, as Nevermind is going to push forwards. He is going to be able to siege up, and it says this base is not happening. Taking down a lot of those SCVs, you'll see some of them get blasted apart. Even a tank on the on the uh, far distance is also taken out. Nevermind going to lose some of his Vikings units. We'll be more careful with that. But as we can see, Nevermind is able to take a position here where he can stop this from mining and this is what I'm talking about if he had a fifth base up right now he would be mining quite nicely and uh, would be bringing in the gas could be looking to make that transition into late game Sky Terran which revolves around battle cruisers, ravens and a few vikings as well so this is the point for both of these players where they want to make that decision do I want to start to switch over well for Azamato he's already said yes he's got his fusion core on the way we can also see a couple of vikings are now coming out extra starports being built up so he is going to move in towards that sky terran style very very soon here but uh, for the moment he's going to be lacking in a little bit of gas coming in from this base as the fourth has been switched up for the moment and uh even control the watch tower really nicely done by the mind i think this planetary is going to go down the scbs are having a hard time repairing that it does go down and uh we may see a little bit of movement coming out of nevermind He'll it's a little bit worrisome that he's in this uh, in this sort of pocket here. If we get a flank from uh, from two sides from Azamato, he could be he could be able to crush all of this here. We'll see if it happens. But uh, here we go, Azamato now pushing forwards. In fact, it is going to happen down on the bottom side of this. We do have a flank coming in the tanks, and the Marines have all been annihilated. They're very nicely done by Azamato. 
And uh, while that is going on though, he is going to lose his attempted fifth base. So down to just the three mining bases right now. And never mind, he's even going to stem forwards and come through to try and take as much of this out as he can. Locking off these reinforcements. He does not want his opponent to be able to reinforce these units back here or be able to get into a good position where he can siege up this position as well. So never mind. Has taken a, a bit of an advantage here, I would say. I, as I said, I, he needs to make sure that he is taking advantage of his economy here, though. You need to have the options available to transition into VC Raven as the game moves on. But the tanks will come forwards for Azamato, sieges up and splashes across all of those Marines. I have a feeling that while uh, Nevermind is going to win the Marine War, he's not going to win the tank war. And that is exactly what happens. Azamato dropping down a couple of tanks. And he is going to have an absolute party there. Now sitting at an army supply of 95 to 72. He's put himself back into position here. He needs to secure some gas as he is starting to transition over to those battle cruisers. As we can see, the first of those big boys is on the way. Plus three to vehicle and ship weapons is also now coming through for Azamato 2. So this is the point where... Uh, you know, you have to be very careful with your movements of your units. You have to judge where am I going to push out with these tanks? Is it actually worth pushing out? What I really want to get right now is some extra gas. So perhaps it's best to just try and turtle up, set some siege tanks up, control this El Naga Watchtower, of course, and make sure that I can try and stop my opponent from pushing into the gas too much because if he does then he can certainly also head up towards battle cruisers get a lot of vikings out and put himself in a decent position but azamato has uh, been slowly moving himself around has uh, the first of his battle cruisers now just about to pop out as we said before marines and marauders have continually been coming out here but uh, have not been uh, a huge force to be reckoned with but speaking of which these marines stemming forwards uh, will try and target down some of the tanks very nicely done there by nevermind he's still gonna lose quite a few units on the ground though and never mind does still have a high tank count here of six compared to his opponent's three but keep in mind, those battle cruisers are slowly going to start to pile up. And once you get to a point of around about sort of five to six, that's where those guys start to become a really powerful force to be reckoned with. But now, as you can see, Nevermind is starting to move about. He's got a huge group of Marines and tanks ready to go here. His third base still mining quite nicely. Main is gone. Natural is gone. His third base, uh, sorry, fourth base is under attack now. And hopefully he'll notice that he does not have the gas here. Or perhaps he's just deciding that because he's got a bank of 5k, he doesn't need it. But uh, we're still seeing no real signs of a starport switch here from Nevermind. He's decided for the moment that we're going to keep things simple, stick with Marine Tank, and just try and take advantage of the, uh, well, the mobility of the Marines, the high power of these tanks, and hopefully what he wants to do here is we can see a scan go down. He wants to move forwards and try and do something about this fourth base. If he can get in here and deny this once again, he can certainly put himself in a very nice position, but he has to be very, very careful here as the Battlecruiser army slowly starts to peak up. Azamato is going to become a very, very strong force here. But we can see, uh, again, I, I'm not sure how I feel about moving down the back side of this base here. It's wonderful for taking out the base, but I mean, you're going to have units coming in from two sides. Battlecruisers are going to come across from the edge as well. The tanks can try and cut off some of these uh, reinforcement units as well. But for the moment, Azamato is losing quite a lot of his forces. We see tanks are going down for Azamato, but he does have a huge fire force on the ground. Marines are tanks pushing forward. They are going to slaughter quite a lot of the units there. The battle cruisers up to the side are going to be able to finish off the rest of those units. And that will be that main army just smashed apart there by Azamato, taking advantage of the... I don't want to call it a blunder, but I kind of feel like it's a, it's a little bit of a difficult position to put yourself in a corner like this. It's basically painting yourself into a corner as uh, the best usage of that, that uh, phrase can come for. But, I mean, Azamato now has his fifth base up and running. He's got that extra gas coming in. He has Battlecruiser production. We'll see probably a few more starports get thrown down, I would assume. But uh, he has also got the 3-3 on his weapons for his uh, weapons for both the infantry and the sky units as well, as long as as well as the vehicles, of course. And uh, I think, well, the transition for Nevermind is, is not going to try and counter Battlecruiser or Ravens or Vikings. It can be very difficult to try and counter catch your opponent if they're already ahead in that race 
but what he is going to do is get some Thors out. These guys can be quite useful against big, uh, big groups of battle cruisers, or sorry, against lower counts of battle cruisers. They can be quite useful against bigger counts of battle cruisers. Not as awesome because you're just going to get your motto cannon down, and that uh, can be the end of your day. So what we'll probably see here from uh, from Nevermind is going to switch these guys into the high impact payload mode and try and tug down the battle cruisers. That would be the best thing he could try and do here. But what he's going to do is uh, well, it looks like he wants to try and go for a base trade. A few more, a lot of marines, a couple of tanks are going to push through the battle cruisers now coming across. Probably there is the high impact payload not doing enough damage there, especially when they're. There are Marines and Marauders raining down fire on top of the Thors there. They get annihilated. And now we have a very interesting base trade here where we will get... Uh, if Azamato just cranks out a couple of tanks and sits them at the top of the ridge here, he should be in a really nice position. But one of the tanks moves forwards. Unfortunately, it does go down. There is a second tank now just popping out as well. It is going to move into this... Uh, it's not going to siege up at all, in fact. I think that's just going to yeah, come across to the battle and will go down. But while this is all going on... Azamato is now pushing forwards himself, has a huge fire force that's already inside the main base of his opponent, cuts down the production facilities, renders him absolutely inert right now because, uh, well, basically, never mind at this point, has these units and, you know, a couple of stray marines around about the place, but that is it. And once again, I kind of feel siege that tank up and then we're pretty good here for Azamato. No, he's going to push forwards. Well, alright, that wasn't the best siege of a tank, but uh, Azamato has now basically cleaned out the main base here. We've got a few more buildings in here that can be removed, but uh, never mind. He's going to try and get out some uh, some Vikings and a couple of medevacs are here as well to try and deal with the battle cruisers, and then maybe he can try and trade back, but I think at this point it is all done for with Azamato with a very powerful force. Not only does he have a couple of battle cruisers up in the sky, but he also has a larger tank count. He's got a lot of marauders and a lot of marines here as well, so I think this is already hugely in favor of Azamato. The work being done by Nevermind to try and clear out the uh, extra outlying bases is uh, is admirable, but it's not actually going to get the job done because Nevermind is going to have a hard time catching up with the unit count of Azamato. And, well, I mean, possibly with a final push now coming along, tanks are going to siege up. Vikings are doing battle with the battle cruisers up in the sky. A huge salvo of tank fire goes down, annihilating a lot of those marines. This is, uh, this is actually just the majority force of Nevermind's forces, just by the way, so he is uh, going to have to deal with this. Needs to be very careful. The Marines is trying to split up bank, maybe to try and uh, you know, not take as much damage, but it is all way too much here. The Marines get annihilated. The Vikings will take care of the battle cruisers, but it is all done and dusted here on Star Station with the really interesting battle going the way of Azamato. A couple, as I said, a couple of blunders I kind of feel like where uh, where Nevermind moved into this, uh, painted himself into a corner there. I feel like perhaps if he was able to push into this sort of position where he can cover himself from the side and maybe, you know, fire down on this base, that would have been a nicer position to have. But unfortunately, wanted to go around the other way and was being a little bit cheeky on the high ground. But uh, either way, great game between these two Masters Terran players. Hope you all enjoy the match. I'll catch you all next time. Here. As you can see, 47 damage to bio units and then the 34 damage against other standard targets. His storms have also been wonderful, just spreading them out across the battlefield, doing really, really nicely there. And uh, for Minigun, he's been sticking with a very a much more